show you about everything I know in five minutes or less. It's just a regular old Dremel tool. And I got these stones. My sister bought these stones for me before she died, man. Bought me a pack of five. Look here. Maybe it was a pack of ten. Yeah, it was a pack of ten. And there was five in each. And I had two packs. And I give one to my brother. They're diamond impregnated stones. And they work And they wood. don't cost diddly. They're cheap. But these are the kind I like. They're Dremel stones. And it's... It's, uh, they're the pink ones. They're kind of color-coded. These are for big saws, and then when you wear them down on the big saw, you can use them on the littler saw. See, I wore that one down on a big saw, and it's almost wore down enough. I'm gonna sharpen another big saw. I'll touch that one up, and then I'll sharpen this one here with it because it'll be the right size, which this right here is the right size. See, it's a little big but it's the right size. And the way you tell it's the right size is this here. This roundness should be just a little above the flat spot where that goes in like that. Mm -hmm. And you put an angle on it. They got lines on them, a lot of them, but it's, the angle's about right on this. It's just getting dull where it don't feel like a knife blade. But anyway, back to with this stone, this is the stone you use and you always do this part first taking what I call the dregs, and it's like, that's what the wood rides on before it hits the tooth right here. The wood comes scooting across here, and it catches a little piece of a sharp edge that sticks up above this right here. See, as you see, it's on a, the tooth is on an angle like that. The further back you sharpen it, the more you gotta bring these down so you're catching more wood. That's what makes the size of your chip is how low this is down. But if you get it too low down, it'll it'll catch in the wood. You see what I mean? Yeah. And you can take a flat file like this here, them ones that we had, we're, we're, yeah, here it is. You can take a flat file and lay it on the top edge of this one here and the next one on the same side, not the other side, but this side to this side and you can look down through there and see there ain't no room. That's why it's throwing powder instead of throwing chips. You put it right on the top edge of it. Shoot, that sucker was throwing wood chucks yesterday when we started. Yeah, but by the time we got through with all them cuts, yeah. it ain't, you'll see, it'll be cutting even faster when we get through doing this. But it's not cutting all that bad. What it's a brand new it? chain. The dregs? Yeah, these are what I call the dregs. Some people call them the rakes. I don't really know the right name for them. I've only been doing this for a long time. About 40, 30, 40 years. <laughs> well, I started sawing in 1974, but that was just when I was a boy helping a feller gather firewood. But, and you, I always, they say this degree, that degree. I always just keep it flat. And what you got is you're sharpening three things. This edge right here, and that curled edge right here, which diverts the chip away that little round piece, if you get too small a one and this, this isn't up above that, it'll go back into, into it one. and it'll make it pull wrong. But you sharpen them even, they can be little teeth on one side and bigger on the other, but you just sharpen the, the one side more than the other. If it pulls one way or another, just get it out there and feel which one's the, the dullest and sharpen only that side and then usually it'll straighten up. But how they're alternating from side to side, each yeah, side. They're supposed to be even. But see how this side is, is smaller than that side because the, when my brother sharpened it last, it uh, he he had this side catches more than that side when you're cutting. One side will get wore out faster than the other. That's just the way it is. But here's the here's the thing. When you're sharpening it, you'll want it to, to lay against it at the same, at the right angle, and all of them be the same angle, whether it's 30, 35, whatever. And and you can feel the tooth. See, they're not that dull on this side over here. Yeah. But this side is getting kind of dull, and that's what makes it not go through the wood smooth when we're coming up, coming out of the cuts on them bigger ones. Yeah. 
that's why it was kind of getting chinchy and you had to go ring, 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 or whatever like that. But that's that's how you do it. And you just move it steady from one end, all the far as the end you can go back and forth. You want to, and that way it wears evenly across the thing instead of uh, like on this one. See how it's spot. more in the middle? Yeah. And it's naturally going to do that because you can't. Because it's but passing there, there twice as much as it I'll is at your end. I'll sharpen two or three of them with just the end. Yeah. You know, or just the other end. Yeah. Whichever one's the fattest. I try to keep them as level as I can. It's a game I play. But this one, oh yeah, this is a good one. For cut. It's almost small enough to do these. I can touch that one up one more time because it's not all that dull. We hadn't made all that many cuts with it. I can touch that other one up and then it'll be the right to use this. But I got these fancy ones my sister bought me. I'm going to use them sparingly so I'll have them for a lot longer and then I, well, I'll think more about my sister and how nice she was. But always wear these things because them little bitty specks of metal that come over there, they'll get in your eyeball and they're kind of irritating. Y'all, I've had a chainsaw for over 20 years and right now I own three or four chainsaws. And I always thought that I knew how to use a saw and maintain one. I'm on about my fifth hour helping him and about at least a third of that, he's been kind of apprenticing me and showing me some things. and. I'm going to tell you, there's a lot of little things I didn't know about a chainsaw. It's always best not to let them get too dull before you sharpen them. That way it only takes just a little bit to get them where they need to be. But back to what I was saying, there's three things you're sharpening. This edge right here on the top, right there, from here to here. Ow, that's hot. This edge from here to here, the point, which grabs the wood down here when you're getting a hold of it. And then that thing right there the side tooth over here on this side see how it's kind of a it'll, it'll be a moon shape see that's where it's mostly dull on this is that side tooth it's supposed to be like a, a, a crescent moon shape when it's right it will be when it come on down in there a little more you can see how it's not just so right there but it'll be like a crescent moon shape that one two and the point and beveled back on the inside of that moon. if you get this one and that one, the point will be there. Because yeah. you got the right angle on it. I always play, see when they get dull, the angle goes this way. This way right here. When they get dull, the tooth angle will be dull this way. You got to bring it back this way to make it sharp. I always cheat a little bit more and make it even a little bit more blunt. That gives me more time that it takes to wear it back to where it's dull if you use the right size stone just a hair above the top of that is the perfect size stone whether it's a big saw little saw it's the roundness in this half moon thing see and you lay level like that and you make them all the same and that's what makes it a nice even cut i would like to turn it up as fast as it'll go this one's just a 20 dollar one it only has one speed i guess that last one I had, you could turn it up faster. And I never sharpened the blade with a Dremel. Uh, it's the quickest and easiest way that I've found. I mean, if you got one of the fancy machines, which I got one, but it's a cheap one from like Harbor Freight. No, I believe you know what you're doing. I just, I'd mess it up before I ever got anywhere, probably. Maybe not now. Take me a little bit. See, that one's way out of whack. See how it's kind of, it's hit some metal or rock or something. See, it's starting to straighten up now. Oh yeah, and I told you, you always do these things first before you do this. That way, if you hit this, it don't dull the tooth, you just sharpen. What are you doing to those again? I'm gonna drop them down a little bit because like I was showing you with the file, they, uh, They isn't, they isn't much wood. It's not catching much wood because my brother, when he sharpened it, he didn't take them down. He just hits them a lick or two with a flat file or didn't hit them at all. He just sharpened it. And it's like you said, it was cutting pretty good and because it had really sharp teeth. What you but we're going to take a little bit off right there. 
All right, show me one more time with that up there, what you're See, trying the, to See, the top point of this one, yeah. or this one, or the top point of this one, or that one, if you're checking these teeth. Yeah. But what I do is I just do it right here on the end, and I just take a little bit off of it. Mm -hmm. Not much, because if you take too much off, it'll, it'll keep grabbing in the cut and stopping it. Because it's going to be sharp when we get done, and it'll be grabbing, because it's like a razor blade and a sharp knife and twiddling a piece of wood. If you get too much wood, it'll stop your knife. So you always do these first. The uh, the cone thing with the, you always grind them. Everybody, most people like to use a flat file to do it. That thing will get super hot too. This being diamond stone is what the best thing to do is to have a little water drip and keep that stone wet and it'll last almost forever if you do that. Don't ever let it get hot. If it gets hot, them little diamond things start coming off of it. But this other kind doesn't matter because it's just abrasive stone. It ain't diamond impregnated. All that shiny stuff looks like quartz is diamonds in the wet when they make it. I've sharpened quite a few saws with that. This is one thing that really slings the little pieces of metal too. You just get it going like this. Used to, I'd take a Coke can and tear it in half and hold it over the tooth like that. And you just hit it a little bit like that. If you take too much off, it'll be trouble. But you just do that. I've never conditioned those pieces of a blade. I never and knew you throw it, it away because it won't cut shit yeah. even when it feels sharp. Oh, the I easy believe... way to do it is when you go down through here, you a right. lot of times there'll be two teeth that are the same without what, you know, it's supposed to be every other one. You see what I mean? These two teeth are facing this way and there ain't one facing that way in between it. Mm -hmm. If you'll start on that one, when it comes back up, you know where you're you'll at. know where you started from and then start the same way when you're sharpening the other thing. And that way you won't be sharpening them twice, which sometimes I, I'll sharpen them with that thing and then I'll brush over them with a file, which this is not the right size file for this saw. I'm not kidding you. I threw away a many a chain yeah. thinking that I, you know, or just wore just so filed them down. I'll, I'll take a chain that's dull like this or worse dull than this. I'll take it off and go put my brand new one on. It just cost me $20. I got a bucket full of chains. And they sit around and they rust and I'll go buy me a new one. I filed them down to nothing before trying to sharpen them and get the sharpen right when it was those pieces that needed took down. Exactly. And y'all, that's on the little links. What are those links called again, John? Do they I have them? them dregs or rakes called the dregs. He said most people nowadays calls it the rake. Rake, yeah. And uh, they need to be conditioned just as much as you probably maybe ever, what do you say, ever every other, other time? Every other time, maybe. I always get carried away and take it down too far to where you gotta kinda hold back on it just to get it to cut through it for a while until it the, the new gets off the sharpening. This right here will save you a chain and save you a lot of time. I never even knew it, y'all. It'll, it's, it's an important part of it. And most chainsaw sharpeners, like you take your saw to the chain shop, they won't do the rake because that puts them at liability. If the chain, this, this one in the front means it's, a, it's not a professional chain, it's a safety chain. Professional chains will only have the one right in front of the tooth. One more time. See this right here? This is a this is the safety chain. Yeah. It makes it where it don't kick back. They call them low kickback chains. What that style length? Yeah, that length. You can grind that sucker all the way off it. If you it it puts you at liable risk because it kicks back more. But if you run a saw long enough and it makes it dangerous. That's why people cut themselves all the time. Well, this thing looks like it's backing out. I better tighten that down a little bit. I'm gonna tell you, the saws we was using yesterday and today, uh, I don't know if I've ever seen a brand new one chunk wood like that. I mean, it's chunk, uh, not- And I'm saying, this saw is dull, we need to sharpen. <laughs> yeah, it was chunking wood. 
If my battery's not dead, y'all, I'll try to have a continuation of this one once we get up in the tree so you can see how this thing's chucking wood. John, we appreciate your time today giving us some instructions.